Well, let's get started on this. Um, you you were talking about how you like uh, Joel Greenblatt, and that's you're right. I'm guilty. I, that was how I learned about that particular <laughs> particular type of, of investing. Uh, but what was it that that attracted you to it? Yeah. So to kind of spinoffs or to the book or. To, to, to spinoffs in general. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, so I, my background is I, I started my career at Eaton Vance, which is a big mutual fund company or a decent sized mutual company in Boston. And I was doing equity research. Um, and I was doing, you know, got my CFA, um, worked under some, you know, pretty, you know, smart, experienced, um, senior analysts. And we covered mainly like the big cap stocks. So like, you know, I think Apple even in, you know, 2013 when I left represented like 5% of the index. So like one of the technology analysts like job was just to like try to get Apple right. And, you know, usually more often than not he did, but it just, it strikes me that it's, it's very hard to get um, the big cap stocks right consistently because there are a lot of smart MBAs, CFAs, PhDs analyzing the market buy side, sell side, analyzing, trying to, trying to beat the market. And so, um, you know, it, it just struck me as it was, it was, it was just, it, it, it was hard to do. And you see that, you know, the vast majority of, of mutual funds don't outperform the market um, before fees, never mind after fees. And that's, of course, why we've seen, you know, the, the huge secular growth of index funds and ETFs. But, you know, reading Greenblatt's book, it was just kind of fun to be like, oh yeah, this completely makes sense. Like, look where most people aren't looking instead of trying to be smarter than somebody else and, and figure out which, you know, large cap stock to buy, just be in the right place, right? Be able to have done your, do your work ahead of time and then be able to buy from people who are basically forced to sell because um, through institutional mandates, they, they're not even allowed to own a, a certain spin off because it's maybe, you know, trading below $10 or it's trading below a certain market cap. And so it just, it just made all the sense in the world to me. And then the other aspect about it is it's just, it's just super interesting. Um, I think the other really good thing about, about Greenblatt, about, about his book is he made it, he made it seem, um, he didn't make it seem overly complex. So the, the case studies that he went through weren't, you know, weren't, it didn't, it didn't take a PhD to be able to recognize, you know, the value. He said, you know, here's the company. I just looked up a couple of its competitors. They were trading, you know, you know, 30% higher. I, I knew that th this company was going to be growing because there were a couple um, hints in the Forum 10. And, um, and so, you know, that also made it um, approachable or it, it, it made it seem like, okay, this guy's clearly, you know, very smart, um, very seasoned, very good at what he does, but like maybe I can do it too. And so I think um, just seemed really interesting and inefficient asset class. And then the fact that it seemed, you know, it seemed like if, if you're willing to do your work, you don't have to be super brilliant. Um, but, you know, if you find an interesting one, um, you know, it can, it can be, it can be um, a chance to make potentially a lot of money. So it, it seemed, uh, it seemed like a lot of fun. So I, you know, after that, I started kind of dabbling, dabbling in the spinoff world. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I, you, your path has been very similar to my own. I, I just, it makes sense to not look where everyone else is looking and just, Hey, be willing to do it. And the crazy thing is, is it seems like it continues to be that way. So yeah, definitely agree. 